If only I had properly set up my airplane, this wouldn't have happened. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. On this episode, I'm going to show you how to properly set up your RC airplane as well as what tools you're going to need to make that setup a success. Now, if you're interested in picking up any of those tools, check down in the description below for the links to my Amazon affiliate account. A little disclaimer, if you choose to make a purchase using one of those links, I'll get a small commission off that sale. Now, it won't change what you pay. It just helps me to fund more videos like this one, as well as travel around Texas and Louisiana, bringing you all the sights and sounds of the events. Now, with that out of the way, let's get right into it. Once your plane is assembled, then it's time to install the electronic components like your receiver, your batteries, your switches, and your servos. In my opinion, the most critical component next to the receiver and batteries is going to be the servo. The servo is the durable workhorse that takes a signal from the receiver that you send from the transmitter and moves a corresponding control surface. Setting up a servo is not that complicated. There's a few things that you need to do prior to installation. Now taking a closer look at the servo, you'll notice that there are rubber grommets along with brass eyelets on either end. And they both serve useful functions. The rubber grommets help dampen a lot of the vibration that is put off by the motor, as well as the brass eyelets will help prevent the wood underneath the servo tray from being crushed as you're tightening up the screw. Now that you have your brass eyelets and your grommets in place, it's time to mount the servo. For this, you want to refer to the owner's manual to find out where they go in the airplane as well as what direction the servo will face. Now, before you grab the mounting screws and the screwdriver, you'll want to take a little pin vise drill with a small diameter drill bit and drill in the mounting holes of all the servos. Then you want to take and put a couple of drops of CA glue in each of those holes. And once it dries, it gives that wood a little bit more strength so when you put your mounting screws in. Next, we're gonna to need to center our servos. And you have one of two ways of doing this. If you've already mounted the servos into your airplane, it's just a matter of connecting a battery to your receiver, turning on the switch, and your servo will do a little mini cycle and automatically center itself. Or you can use a servo tester. The key benefit of the servo tester is not only will it let you center your servo, but it will also let you manually and automatically test the travel limits of that servo. That way you can check to see if there's any clicking or binding of that servo before you proceed. Now that we have the servos installed and centered, we can turn our attentions to the servo arm. If you already have your push rods inserted into the airplane and connected to your control surfaces, you have two ways to connect those push rods up to the servo arm. One, you can either use an easy connector and just lock down the lock screw to keep it in place, or you can put a Z-bin with a Z-bin pliers and feed it through the end of the servo arm. And then mount it to the servo itself at a 90 degree angle from the body of the servo so that it has free travel left and right. I recommend as a good added measure to put a couple of drops of blue Loctite on the servo arm screw before you tighten it down to the servo. This will prevent it from backing out from many revolutions of the servo arm. Now that our push rods are connected to the servos, let's focus our attention on the control surfaces. And in this example, it's gonna be the elevator as all the other control surfaces are gonna be set up exactly the same way. So looking a little closer at it, what you want to make sure is that your control surface, in this case the elevator, is completely straight in a line with the horizontal stabilizer. One thing I almost forgot to mention and I want to clear up any kind of confusion that you may have is on the push rod. We connected the push rod at one end to the servo and the other end is going to go to a control surface. Well, on one end of the push rod is just straight metal. The other side has threads on it that you put a plastic or metal clevis on that connects up to the control horn that is connected to the control surface. And you'll do this with all the control surfaces. You wanna make sure every single one of them are straight and in a line. Next up on the list, we're gonna set the low and high rates for those control surfaces. In case you're not familiar with low and high rates, low rates is a predetermined set of deflection for the control surface. Whereas high rates give you an extra amount of deflection on that control surface. 
that's how a lot of these 3D pilots are able to achieve some of the maneuvers they're able to do is because they fly a lot in high rates where they get more control over that control surface. The best way to determine the amount of throw for any given control surface is the use of a throw meter. The throw meters are very invaluable tools and they'll help you save a lot of time and trouble when setting up your control surface. Using a throw meter is extremely easy and simple to use. You just clamp it onto your control surface, use the arm to zero out the dial, and then with your radio, assign a switch to your low and high rates, look at your owner's manual, see what that value is, and then using the endpoint adjustments in your radio, you can either dial it up or dial it down to get it right on the mark on going up and down. And then you do the same thing with the high rates. You flip the switch and you use a throw meter to set the rates for the high rates. All right, you still with me so far? Great. All right, once we got all that done, now it's time to put the wings on and check for balance or CG. The reason why you want to balance or find the center of gravity of your airplane is that the CG is where your plane perfectly balances out straight as in level flight. It's not too nose heavy and it's not too tail heavy. If you have a too nose heavy airplane, it's going to act like a lawn dart. If it's too tail heavy, your plane's going to pitch its nose up and it's going to become uncontrollable right up to the point that it crashes. So what you want to do is you want to make your plane as perfectly balanced as you can. And the best way to do that is look at your owner's manual to where they recommend what the CG is and then measure back from the leading edge of the wing back to what it says. And you can use any kind of measurement tool and they usually measure in millimeters. So you can measure out where the recommended CG is. In this case, it's gonna be right about here. You have a couple options. You can either put a little uh, magic marker dot to signify that's where it's at, or you can put a piece of tape. The choice is really yours how you want to mark it so you can always know where the CG is and be able to check it at a moment's notice. And when you go to actually balance your airplane, you have a couple options available to you. You can either use a commercially available CG machine or you can use your fingers. The only added benefit that a CG machine has with it is it acts as an extra set of hands. So when you put it up on the CG machine and you're holding the nose, you can let go and see which way the plane tips. If the plane tips too far forward, you know it's nose heavy. If it tips tail, it's tail heavy. So some of these techniques you can use on both foam and balsa airplanes is to move the battery packs around. If it's too nose heavy, move the battery packs back a little at a time and test for balance until you achieve the balance on that CG. Now if it tips backwards towards the tail, then the same thing, move your batteries more far forward towards the firewall to see if you can get the balance on that center of gravity point. Let's say you've moved your batteries around but your airplane is still nose heavy. What can you do? I would recommend getting some lead weight. These happen to be quarter ounce or seven gram weight that have a sticky backing to them. Tear off one piece of that weight and put it somewhere on the back of the airplane to see if it will balance out. Just keep moving it out until you can find the balance point. And if that one piece doesn't do it, tear off another piece and put it there with that other weight. You want to use just enough weight until the plane balances. And you may have to move that weight around several different spots down the fuselage to find the balance point. Then what you do, you peel the sticky side off, stick it to the bottom side of your airplane, Check your balance again, it should be right on the money. Now in case you don't have a CG machine, let me demonstrate how you can do it with your fingers. It works the same way. Basically, if you've marked the bottom of the wing where the CG spots are, place your fingers at that spot close to the fuselage and then pick up. If your plane is perfectly balanced, you're good to go. If it's nose heavy, you follow the same steps of adding weight to the back or to the front until it balances out on that CG spot. That's all there really is to it. Not that much to balance an airplane, but it is a critical component to make sure that the plane is balanced. I can't stress that enough. One of the things you definitely want to make sure that it's properly balanced right out of the box is going to be the propeller. An unbalanced propeller will cause all kind of undue wear and tear and stress on the engine as well as your airframe that could possibly lead to a catastrophic event. Now one of the best tools to use 
is going to be a prop balancer. They're fairly simple and straightforward to use and once you have your propeller on there you want to make sure that your propeller is completely level. If it's perfectly level then you know it's a balanced prop. If it's off to one side you might be able to lightly sand the heavier end on the back side of the propeller. But don't take off too much to where it changes the shape of the propeller because then you're inviting more issues. That's really it to setting up an RC airplane. As long as you take your time and work methodically, you'll have a perfectly set up airplane. Now if you found this video informative or entertaining, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing, hit the bell notification so you don't miss an episode like this. And until next time, I'll see you at the field.